Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about how to install HBase NoSQL database. So before starting the installation, let me tell you the prerequisite which is required for it. So for HBase, you need Hadoop and Java to be get installed before because HBase is a Hadoop framework. So not only HBase, even if you take Hive Peak Scoop, so you need Hadoop first. So if you take other NoSQL databases like Cassandra or MongoDB, Hadoop installation is not a prerequisite. It is only optional. It's not mandatory. So for example, you are connecting MongoDB with Hadoop or you want to read something from MongoDB to HDFS, HDFS to MongoDB. In that case, you need Hadoop. Uh, same for Cassandra as well. But HBase is not an independent NoSQL database. It depends on top of HDFS, Hadoop only because HBase writes its data in HDFS. So that's why we need Hadoop first and then all the Hadoop daemon should be up and running and then only you can start HBase daemon and then only it will work. Fine. So I'll just show you the version of Hadoop that I'm using and the JDK first. So Hadoop version is 2.9.1 and JDK is 1.8.0 underscore 45 and HBase which I'm going to use is HBase 1.2.6 which is a uh, running version for Hadoop 2.9.1 which is compatible one. Fine. So before we start, right? So as I told you, we need Hadoop to be installed first. In my mission, Hadoop is already installed. And if you want to get the installation video for Hadoop, then you can find the link in the description box of this video. So now what I have to do is I have to set my path for Hadoop and Java in the environmental file, how you do in Windows, right? So in my computer settings where you used to uh, set the Java path, Python path or whatever you install, you used to set. Similarly, in Linux, we have a file called bash rc. So you have to open this file. In some OS, it will be bash profile, bash, just bash rc. You can identify it. So here, if you just search in Google for the equivalent to OS Linux, what you are using, what is an environmental file name, you will get it. So this is Ubuntu. In Ubuntu, it is bash rc. Just open this file, go to the last line of this file. So you need to have these three lines, export Java home, which I'm setting the Java path and then Hadoop path. And finally, I'm passing all the home slash bin of both Java and Hadoop to path variable. So the last line, the, the purpose of last line is you can run Hadoop commands and Java commands from any directories. Okay. So now I need to set Hadoop home because for HBase you need Hadoop. Because when you start HBase, HBase asks to Linux OS like where the Hadoop is. So what Linux will do, it will check the bash rc file. In bash rc, if you haven't given this path, then Linux will not know where it is running. Okay. In simple term, if I want to say why it is required, this is what the reason why we need Hadoop home to be set on bash rc because whenever you start Hive or HBase or Pig, it requires Hadoop. So it checks with bash rc file only. So now save this file, escape colon w cube. After saving this file, you have to execute this file, source space dot bash rc, enter. Now what is the next thing? So you have to start Hadoop daemons. So s bin slash start iPhone all dot sh. So because you need this Hadoop daemon should be up and running and then only your HBase will work. So let the daemons get start. Now I will just show you the configuration file of HBase. So this is HBase, just open this and then the conf folder. So it's very simple. There is only couple of files you need to modify. One is HBase env.sh and hbase-site.xml. And if you don't find this file, right? So this file will be there, but in a different name, hbase-site.xml underscore template or dot template. So the file will be that way. You have to rename the file. Just remove the template and just have hbase-site.xml. Just open this two file. So it's, all, it's already opened. So HBase env.sh is an environmental file where you have to set Java home, the same what we did in bash rc, the same Java home only, not Hadoop home, only Java home, you have to set it here. So you can add this Java home anywhere in the script, between or top or bottom, anywhere you can add. So here I have added Java home. Now next, Hadoop hbase-site.xml. So here where you have to add all the HBase related properties in this file only. So the first property you see here, HBase root directory. So I'm giving localhost 50,000 slash HBase. If you, if you notice, 50,000 is the port number that we use for name node. That means slash HBase, a directory will be get created in your HDFS where all your HBase data will be get stored. Okay, so that we want to create in the HDFS. That's why we are giving this 
port number, name nodes port number slash hbase. And then next hbase port. So we need a port number for hbase, right? So how we have a port number for name node, resource manager, data node, node manager. Similarly, we need a port number for hbase to run. This is an RPC port number. So all these port numbers, what I'm telling you is RPC, which is remote procedure call process level port numbers. 60,001 is the port number for hbase. If you want, if you are writing a Spark program or something to connect HBase, then you have to use this IP address colon port number 60001. So the next HBase cluster distributed, yeah, it is true. And then HBase Zookeeper quorum, I'm giving us localhost. So here Zookeeper is a technology which we call it as a cluster coordinator. So this cluster coordinator, actually it's a, it's a separate technology. So we use Zookeeper in many places, even in Hadoop, Kafka we use. So Zookeeper act as a medium to connect between your region servers. So region servers are something we call where all your data of HBase will be get stored. So this region server is a daemon that will be get started once you start HBase. This region server will be get started on your data nodes only. So I can say in a simple word, so how you have master slave concept of Hadoop. Similarly, there is a master slave concept for HBase. So the master daemon for HBase is HMaster and the slave daemon name is region server. So the coordination between the region server and the master and the coordination between the region server and the data, the rows what you have inserted, the coordination has been done by the zookeeper only. Okay, so this zookeeper actually does the metadata service for HBase. Okay, so whenever the, the, the connection, the request you send, it goes to HMaster, then zookeeper and then only it goes to your region servers that is slaves to retrieve the data or to write the data. So the last property is how many connections that you can enable for the client connection for Zookeeper. So we are giving 35. So default is 60 connections. So you can change it accordingly. Fine. So save this file. Now it's time to start your HBase daemon. So just give JPS and see all your Hadoop daemon is up and running. Yeah, five daemons are there. Now change your directory to HBase. Now bin slash start hbase.sh. So this will start three additional daemons, hmaster, hregion server and hcorum pair. I will show you once the daemon gets started. So zookeeper is getting started, region server started, master is also started. Now if you give JPS, already you have five daemons for Hadoop. Now you will be having three more daemons. So totally eight daemons. So you have hmaster, hregion server and then hcorum pair. That's it. So hbase is running. Now, HBase has a shell. So similarly, how you have hive shell, pig shell, right? So similarly, for HBase also, we have HBase shell. So how to start the cell? Bin slash HBase space shell. So this will take you to HBase shell. Okay, so we are, we are into the HBase shell. So generally, whenever we get into some databases, right? We used to check for some basic commands, whether it is working or not. So we used to give show databases, right? So similarly, we have the command, equal and command in HBase is list. It shows the list of tables. So here, if you see, there is no table here, so it's empty. So following like more shell commands of HBase, we will be practicing in my upcoming videos. You can stay in touch with my playlist. Now there is a one more thing I want to tell you before I wind off. You have a web UI for HBase also. So just open your uh, browser and give localhost. So we have this web UI for Hadoop and resource manager, right? So similarly for HBase also, we have 16, 2010. So where you will be seeing your HBase web UI. So here you can see how many region servers you have, how many regions you have. So how much rows get distributed in which regions, which region server, all the information you can able to see here. And where you can also get HBase configuration information because in some uh, uh, missions right in your real time in your production, the HBase site.xml is something where you cannot open, you will not have permission. By the time you can use this HBase configuration to see what are all the uh, properties which was already set in your cluster. Fine. So thanks for watching. So if you really like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. So you have a lot of, you can get my big data videos in my playlist and the playlist link is in the description box of this video. Not only HBase, you have Spark, Hadoop, Hive. So other big data videos also there. Thanks for watching.